Good morning. Welcome to our weekly prayer meeting. The prayer meeting will be put online on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. It's available on our Facebook page or at the St. Paul's website. It is so good to know that today we can join our hearts together and seek God for his word for us today, for our lives, for our church, for our city and our nation. A time we remember and celebrate and consider what is going on around us right now. Those who in their homes have celebrated VE Day to commemorate those who gave their lives in service to protect our future of today. Those who fought on the front line, the key workers who supported them and those who took on work to produce basic essentials so that people could live, albeit in very difficult circumstances. And there were many losses to families whose loved ones never came home. Does this speak to us today? They had years of challenges, but in that time of being innovative as well and still coming through victorious, we are facing a time of uncertainty, of great difficulty, but it is a sacrifice we are willing to make in staying at home, socially distancing, so that we can see that we have part to play in saving as many people as possible from death. But we also have a bigger role than that, for we are going to be praying into the spiritual place in our lives that we know God is at work in our lives and our nation. So let us pray together knowing that our God is more than able to touch lives. I'm reading from John 1 verse 1 to 5. In the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God he existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Hallelujah. From 1939 to 1949, our own nation was in darkness literally in darkness. No light would be seen when the sun went down. How difficult that must have been. On the announcement of victory in Europe, there was a song that was sung when the lights go on all over again all over the world. How powerful that must have been. That sense that once again things could be lit up. Let us consider the impact this would have had on their communities seeing the light switched on once again in their street, the joy they must have felt. We know their hardship didn't stop on that day, but they celebrated in their homes, on the streets with their neighbours and with those that led them to victory. The light was switched on. Let us pray together that the light of Jesus is going to impact people so much that there will be joy in this nation once again. As the people of God, we know that God's light shines in our hearts and it shines in our homes and our communities and our nation. We at this time can continue to celebrate as it says in Psalm 23 verse 5. He prepares a feast for us in the presence of our enemies. We may still face many battles but the victory is ours and we shall stand together this day in the knowledge of knowing this as we continue to pray and seek him. As we consider our God's greatness today, I encourage you, if you have time to pause the prayer session, to read and declare the complete chapter of 104 from Psalm. It is about the greatness of God. And we can declare this over our life, the ministry you serve in church, the place where you work, 
the community you live in and the nation that we are in. It will not only encourage you, but it will enlighten your heart. This is our God, the creator of the earth and humanity, to him who is powerful and mighty in all things. I have taken but a few verses, but I sense as you read it that those doubts, those disappointments you have had of past and present will be laid down as his throne of grace and mercy as we stand in awe of him. As was Peter in Luke 5, let us be honest with God with our struggles in our faith, that the door will be open to see his love, his power and his authority over us and over our nation. He has a plan to save us through Christ Jesus our Lord. This session doesn't just have to run at the speed it's at. You can pause it. You can consider. Let the Holy Spirit stir your heart. So when we go deeper with him, we're at that place of communion with him and we can hear what God is speaking, those deep secrets into our heart. So, O oh Lord, my God, how great you are. You are robed with honour and majesty. You are dressed in a robe of light. May the glory of the Lord continue forever. The Lord takes pleasure in all he has made. And I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last breath. May all my thoughts be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let all sinners vanish from the face of the earth. Let the wicked disappear forever. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we just consider from Psalm 104, that our God reigns, that our Heavenly Father, that we can thank him, that he makes all things new and his mercy are new every day. As we speak of his glory and the works of his hand, that we can be overwhelmed and amazed by his power and his might of his creative, beautiful work, that we are so blessed and honoured to know how much he poured out his love into humanity and gave us such beautiful things to live with. And so we ask, Lord, forgive us for the things that we have thwarted in our relationship with you for limiting you in our lives because of disbelief and disappointment. Forgive us for becoming reliant on ourselves to uphold us for each day. Lord, we ask that you revive us. Revive our dreams that you gave us and let us once again arise to the sound of the trumpet call that victory belongs to you, O oh Lord. Wow. 
So as we've considered God's greatness and just been overwhelmed by who he is, spend time now for you to thank him, to praise his name. Lord, we are stirred in our hearts by what you are showing and revealed to us about your greatness. Revive your church, Lord, that every breath that we take, because it's the breath of yourself, will bring life to our soul. Let your greatness be known throughout this nation. Spirit of the living God, pour out your living water of the Holy Spirit from heaven onto this earth. It has become a desert place, a place of dry bones. But we know one word from you will bring revival to the life and soul of this nation. Our hearts and our hands are ready to do what you ask of us, to serve you with a fullness of heart. Lord, take us as your church, shape us into you who you have called us to be, that we shall follow you wherever you ask us to go, to take your word that will bring life. Amen. Let us pray for our Queen, our government and the decisions they are having to make for the welfare of the nation, the economy that's been drastically affected, the local businesses, the employees and the NHS, all of them working hard for us right now.
Lord Jesus, we as the people of God recognise it is you that sustains us. That is you that has given us freedom already. And we consider even that scripture where Paul said, death, where is your sting? And as Lord, we look at a different perspective on life. As we lay our own feelings down. Because Lord, we already know you. Lord, we cry for our nation. For those things that we have known and become comfortable with have all become under threat. People's lives, lives that are also not under threat of death, but Lord, being damaged. Businesses, empl employment that is in jeopardy. The economy being greatly impacted. Our education system. The hospitals. So many things have been impacted through this invisible enemy. And so we cry out to you, Lord Jesus, and ask that you give wisdom to those in leadership. To our churches too, Father, who are leading this nation through this time as we seek your faith. We, Lord, want to be preparing for the tomorrow. Because, Lord, there is the weak and the vulnerable areas in our society and in people's lives that will need to be looked after and supported. And we remember Lord Jesus Joseph when he gave the dreams to Pharaoh that there would be plenty first and there would be famine. Lord, you already knew and you've prepared us for such a time as this. So Lord Jesus, we ask that you who have called those to take these strategic positions to speak godly wisdom into this situation and direct our nation, I pray, at this time. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us now pray for the church. We are his light in our darkness right now. And we will continue to seek direction as we want to be effective in demonstrating God's love for people in the actions we do. But as a church as well, we want to grow in our faith and our purpose for each one God has purpose for to see his kingdom once again reign over this nation. And as we consider Psalm 119, verse 105, Lord Jesus, your word is a lamp to guide our feet and a light for our path.
Lord Jesus, your word is a lamp to guide our feet. Your word is like a two-edged sword. The sword of the Spirit, Lord, as we consider your word and how powerful and mighty it is that we can speak your word over this nation and it releases the power of God upon it. Hover, Lord Jesus, hover over us. We know that you guide our feet and we ask as we humbly lay our lives down before you that you give us the light for our path. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that 2020 is a year of your favour. Yes, Lord, a year of your favour. That is what you shared with us. It is our desire to see your glory shine over our nation, the nations. We, your church, submit all our plans to you and ask for the seal of approval of the Holy Spirit to see your kingdom further established and extended. We are your servants and we declare to you this day, Sovereign Lord, that we desire you to continue to rule and reign in our churches, that you are exalted in the highest place and we want to be obedient to the call upon our life, on every person's life. Lord, I thank you for the words that are coming from the churches right now. I thank you, Father, that we are being supportive, but Lord, we still want to be innovative. We still, Father, want to cause people to be challenged where they are in their faith by your spirit. Let your people know that they are valued at this time and they are not alone and that they are needed for the work of the kingdom of God. Inspire us in the ways we have never been before and let us go into places of the unknown. But Lord, one thing for sure, you're with us and you've gone before us and we thank you for that lamp that shined for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us continue to pray for our church family because those families will know someone else and we want our families to be impacting others in their community. We want to be praying for immediate families and loved ones, those we know that are sick and unwell, for those struggling with relationships, those who have been in isolation and confinement, and who are lonely, those whose employment has been threatened. For the young, from the youngest to the oldest, many have been impacted and struggling with this time that we've had in lockdown. But there is a hope and our hope is in Christ. So let us pray for them now.
Lord Jesus, we so miss families being together. We so miss being together. And we are so glad that you are the centre of our church. You are the centre of our lives. You are the centre of our family's lives. And Lord, what's intended for evil through this, that good will come. Good will come, Lord. You are our help. You are our refuge. You have not forsaken us. You have not abandoned us. But Lord, with honesty, we pour out our heart to you when we are struggling with just daily living, when we're even trying to be motivated to do things, that we will continue to seek after you. And that we are so thankful, as it says in Ephesians, that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. And that you have chosen us to be your holy people without blame before you in love total love lord let us know how much that means and what you gave up your son's life for us but lord through this we can show others your goodness for you have called us out of the darkness into your wonderful light in your love your peace your assurance and your grace as we cry out to you draw nearer to those who miss their loved ones around them families and extended families their friends because of the lockdown and hear their cry their despair stretch out your hand that is mighty that the light of your glory and grace will shine even brighter. Lord Jesus, present yourself for those who are struggling in different ways. Maybe things in their life that have been a secret, they've not been able to be able to give up. Whatever that habit has been that maybe feels exposed, Lord, I pray good will come out of this. Good will come where they can lay it down before you. For families where there haven't been good relationships, I pray, Lord, through this, that it is an opportunity where your grace and love will arise in those lives. And for those, Father, really struggling and with employment, with the, the loss of job, I pray they will know your security, that their security is in you, Lord Jesus. We recognise it's a time of sacrifice. And Lord, teach us further about what it means to know forbearance, to know patience, to know gentleness, to know self-control, to know love, joy, peace and faithfulness. And may they increasingly be evident in our lives through this challenging time. Just sense through this time together as we've looked at God's greatness so that we can lay aside our doubts and disappointments. As I read this, and we will know it, we're praying this over our nation. And it's from Ezekiel 37. The Lord took hold of me and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Hallelujah. 
then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying we have become old dry bones. Lord, I pray revive our nation. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Are we feeling that today? Therefore, prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says to our people today. O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Lord, let there your kingdom come, I pray. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I have said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. Yes, Lord Jesus, you have spoken this day. And may this word go across our nation as we all join our hearts together and know that you have put breath it back into dry bones. Amen. Have a blessed week and just allow the Holy Spirit stir in your heart the cry for this nation, the cry for people, because Jesus came for people. Hallelujah. Amen.